This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Hey everyone, Jack Beyer here with NASA Spaceflight. SLS is on the pad at 39B for testing. Multiple sections of the Starship Orbital Launch Tower are in assembly. Construction at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility is making rapid progress. And more work was visible at pad 39A to prepare the ground infrastructure there for Starship. All that, plus an update on Blue Origin's Exploration Park facility in this week's CAPE update. First, let's head over to Roberts Road, where we can see the rapid progress being made there. Starting with Hangar X, the exterior walls of the extensions to the building have all been completed, and concrete work outside the delivery area has progressed nicely from our last flyover. We can see here that the entire north-facing wall of one of the extensions has now been completely paneled with glass. This section is a prime contender for office space and launch viewing areas based on how it was constructed with a large glass wall now providing great views out towards Launch Complex 39A and the new proposed Launch Complex 49 Starship Launch and Landing Facility, it's hard not to imagine SpaceX using this area as a prime location for friends and family to watch from. Just to the side of that area and built off to the west of the main Hangar X facility, the new delivery location or loading dock is now fully enclosed as workers have finished its three exterior walls. This delivery area also has a newly completed large concrete pad in front of the main doors. You can see the rebar foundation work for that concrete slab clearly laid out in our last flyover. This area seems large enough to allow multiple deliveries at the same time, including potential booster construction materials, Raptor engines, and various other materials that will be needed not just for Starship but for Falcon 9 refurbishment efforts at Hangar X as well. More curious, though, is a door first mentioned in our last flyover video. Located on the western side of the Hangar X extensions, this door is almost perfectly sized for one half of a Falcon 9 payload fairing. Given SpaceX's desire to consolidate processing as much as possible for efficiency, it would make sense that they would build an area of their own to refurbish and store fairing halves in between flights. Heading over to the west of Hangar X, SpaceX is continuing to build up hardware for the eventual first Starship launch tower at the Cape. We can clearly see a third and fourth tower section being built alongside the first two sections, further to the north, which are at a much later stage of construction. On those two sections, we can see that the central truss for the elevator of the tower is taking shape, with the northernmost one even getting a whole floor for workers to access this level. That level in particular can be seen sporting a bumper or stop for the chopsticks that will eventually be installed in this tower a sign that indicates this is the level that will go right above the concrete base. This is the same design as the tower in Boca Chica. In a new addition to the tower section assembly area, we can see another row of square concrete foundations for at least four more tower levels to be built here. It seems like SpaceX is getting ready to crank out a lot of these tower levels in rapid succession. This could be to support the construction of multiple towers at once, or to enable SpaceX to construct all of 39A's tower segment at once and roll them out at the same time, necessitating only one road closure and lessening the logistical headache. We're definitely looking forward to seeing that happening. Continuing to look around the Roberts Road site, we can see that groundwork for the eventual Starship production area has progressed significantly since our last flight. All pile drilling operations now appear to be complete, Previously, we saw the pile driller diligently working through row after row, digging a hole and then driving rebar into the ground. This was then reinforced with concrete to support the eventual factory's foundation on the marshy ground of Florida's Space Coast. With this work complete, workers will now lay out the foundation footprint and begin preparing the area for work on that foundation. Traveling slightly to the southeast, we can see more ground clearing operations underway for an eventual high bay building like we've seen in Starbase Boca Chica. This is backed up by evidence and publicly available plans for the expansion of Roberts Road. Following in the footsteps of Starbase Boca Chica is not surprising as Starbase is designed not just as a test facility but also as a place to develop overall operations and procedures for manufacturing Starship that can then be implemented at Kennedy Space Center. Finally, the last major change to the Roberts Road area is the ongoing efforts to excavate a retention pond on the western side of the facility. Crews have been busy deepening the pond, as it will be needed from an environmental standpoint for ecosystem stabilization. The retention pond is also a vital way to prevent materials and contaminants from entering the local water of the wildlife refuge. Let's turn our attention now to the launch infrastructure at the Cape, including multiple launch pads. Much to the relief of the Kennedy Space Center's multi-user spaceport aspirations, both LC-39's pads were occupied for a brief period of time. 39B continues to host the Space Launch System rocket for Artemis 1. 
This is the first time a launch vehicle has been on the former shuttle pad since the famously cursed Ares 1X back in 2009. SLS rolled to the pad to conduct a wet dress rehearsal, which began and was then scrubbed on April 3rd. Another wet dress rehearsal attempt was conducted the following day, only to scrub again early into liquid oxygen loading. The next attempt is currently targeting Thursday, pending the resolution to a helium valve on the ICPS, which is the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, or the upper stage of the rocket. This will be a partial test, with the decision to replace the ICPS valve, which can only be carried out inside the VAB, to come after rollback. With one moon rocket on Pad B, when will another grace Pad A? Let's take a look at how construction of the Starship facility in the Pad 39A area is progressing. The first striking difference from our last flyover is the presence of the concrete base of the Starship launch tower rising out of the ground. Rebar can still be seen, so more concrete needs to be filled in, but eventually we should expect it to look pretty much like the tower base we currently see at Starbase Boca Chica. We can also see more work being done on the old hydrogen storage sphere used during the Saturn and Shuttle eras. We still think that this work is to convert the storage sphere for use with liquid methane. This is in part due to something we noticed in updated Google Earth imagery thanks to Harry Stranger. There appear to be subcoolers already installed next to the hydrogen sphere that further indicate the use of this tank as part of the methane farm. Speaking of which, we were also able to spot LOX subcoolers on the other side of the complex, where the previous Starship mount was planned. This was thanks to the great views we had during the Axiom 1 launch webcast. We can see that they are located over the old Starship launch mount and flame diverter structure that SpaceX was building back in 2019. This structure was dismantled in October 2021, and it appears that they are now using these foundations to place all the equipment needed for the lock side of the Starship tank farm. However, 39A's launch site is not the only place at Kennedy Space Center where structures are quickly going up. Over at Blue Origin, the 2CAT structure has been built out with a full second level and installation of the other half of the side panels. In case you missed the explanation of this structure from a previous flyover video of ours, 2CAT will be used to conduct testing of the second stage of New Glenn. It does not appear as if the structure has reached its final height yet, as more pins are visible that would allow installation of additional segments on top of the current second level. According to public plans, the final height of the 2CAT will be 100 feet. Next to it, two more ground structures have popped up as well, with one structure being built on the foundation we spotted last time, and a smaller area being built off the other side of 2CAT. While the bigger one will be used for office space, most likely space to control testing operations related to 2CAT, the smaller structure will most likely function as a support and storage building for the facility. At the main Exploration Park campus, next to the existing warehouse, a large area is being cleared for foundation and construction work ahead of expansion of the complex. Here, the outlines for one of the foundations are now visible for a massive 200,000 square foot manufacturing and support building, which is planned to be expanded further in the near future. Blue Origin is doing a big expansion of their CAPE facilities, with a chemical processing area, a warehouse, and more rocket manufacturing areas. While the other areas are already in construction and visible, Blue Origin has not yet started on the build of the chemical processing facility. It will go up next to the existing large warehouse on the southern end of the campus. At Launch Complex 36, nothing has really changed since our last flyover. A transporter is still on the ramp, and besides that, no major construction appears to be ongoing, at least for now. However, we did get a good look at the Stainless Steel Project Jarvis test tank, which is Blue Origin's first attempt at second stage reusability. This is comparable to Starship tank prototypes we saw at Boca Chica over the last few years. Think SN5 or SN6. Next to the pad, a row of tents has gone up, with four already constructed and a fifth on the way. While it is not confirmed what these tents are for, it is likely that they are there to support Jarvis testing and construction. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this week's video. If you're like me, you learn best from hands-on experience. With Brilliant, you get fun and interactive lessons in math, science, and computer science that help you learn more effectively than just watching a video online. Brilliant uses examples, diagrams, and simple questions to help guide you through topics interactively and at your own pace. Plus, if you get a question wrong or you just want more information, there's always a detailed explanation on how to find the answer. I think viewers of this channel will really enjoy this scientific thinking course, and it's a perfect example of how the simulations provided let you manipulate variables and learn by doing, rather than just reading or watching something. From the basics of how light works, all the way to quantum light and even relativity, it covers all sorts of fascinating topics. Get started learning on Brilliant for free with a special offer just for our viewers. Visit brilliant.org slash nasaspaceflight or click the link in the description. 
The first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. That's it for this week's flyover. Stay tuned for more updates from the Cape in the coming weeks, as well as our daily updates from Starbase Boca Chica in South Texas. Don't forget, if you want to support our channel, we have the membership program with various levels of support and various cool perks. Also, we're currently having a spring sale on our merch store, so if you want a piece of clothing, or a pillow, or maybe even a towel with some cool NASA spaceflight designs, head on over to the store and grab whatever suits your fancy. We really appreciate it.